What's up guys, Harry over at Tackle Express. Are you planning to book a saltwater fishing charter out here in Southern California? Well, here are all of the essentials you will need. One of the most important things that you're gonna need, minus your rod and reel, is going to be a selection of hooks and there are a couple different options to choose from. For instance, your fly lining hook, or also referred to as a J hook. You can find these on our website. You will not find them labeled as J hooks. You will find them labeled as fly lining hooks. But these are extremely versatile for a variety of different fish, and they are made in a variety of different sizes. For instance, out here on the West Coast, we have a few different species of bait that we use, such as anchovies, sardines, and mackerel, to name a few. The mackerel are going to be our largest bait, therefore you can put a much larger hook and not have to worry about damaging the bait because that bait's going to truck along no issue. While with the anchovy, which is a much more delicate, fragile bait, we're going to have to downsize our hooks to go with a much smaller hook that's going to be lighter in weight, therefore we are not going to damage our bait when hooking. The other style of hook are circle hooks. This is an owner Mutu circle hook. These are a little more technique specific, but the main difference between the J hook and your circle hook is going to be the shape of the hook. The way that a circle hook works is because of the circle that it makes is ideally it catches the fish in the corner of the mouth, while the J hook will catch at any point that it can. So when getting bit with a circle hook, Nine times out of 10, you're gonna put your reel into gear and you're just gonna turn the handle and lift your rod. While when fishing a fly liner or J hook, you are going to be required to set the hook a little bit. I don't mean swing for the fence. We're gonna let our bait get bit, put it into gear, whine, whine, lift the rod. Lifting the rod is more than enough to set the hook and hook wise, those are the essentials that you're going to need. And sometimes you may need a weight, or you may not, but there's a few different styles. For instance, we're gonna show you these two today. These are your sliding egg sinkers that are going to slide freely up and down your line. And then we also have our torpedo sinker. This one is designed to drop straight to the bottom as quick as it possibly can. There's a few different times and instances of when you may need to use the other. So for instance, we also talked about our fly lining hooks. What a fly line is, is a hook and a live bait by itself. No weight, no nothing, hook and bait. Not always is a fly liner hook only made for fly lining. For instance, with your sliding egg sinker, you can use your fly lining hook with a small sinker. The time of when you would wanna use a sliding egg sinker like this, for instance, you're out fishing, not a whole lot of actions going on. There's not a lot of birds working. There's no sign of fish. Sometimes they might just be a little lower in the water column. So putting a small sliding egg sinker can get your bait down just a little bit further, which can sometimes make or break your trip. Then we have our torpedo sinkers. As I said, this is something that is designed to drop down to the bottom just as about as quick as it can. You're going to want to have these anywhere from as light as a 6 ounce all the way up to a 16 ounce weight, which is 1 pound. Reason why we may need a variety of those other sizes will depend upon the depth that we're fishing. If we're fishing shallow, 60 to 100 feet, we don't need a 1 pound weight to get there that fast. 6 to 10 ounce will do just fine. But when we get told that the captain's going to take us to fish six to 700 feet of water, you are going to need at least a 16 ounce weight just to get you down to the bottom. So when using the 16 ounce sinkers or torpedo sinkers in general, we're typically going to use a rig called a dropper loop rig, which is going to have the weight on the bottom, a small leader with your hook. You can use that for rock cod fishing, which is a very, very effective rig when targeting rock cod. But there are a couple rigs you may also want to take into consideration. For instance, P-Line rock cod rigs. These are pre-made, ready to go. On the back side of this package, there are two swivels. There is a swivel for you to tie your main line, and there is another swivel with a clip for you to attach your torpedo sinker. This is already pre-made. 
you tie your main line, you have both of your hooks, you put your weight on the bottom, maybe a little bit of squid, and send her on down to the bottom. But sometimes the bite may be so hot, you don't want to run all the way down to the bait tank. So there's a few baits that we would also suggest that may just give you a little more time at the rail. For instance, these double eight octopuses are a fantastic option to put on the end of your hooks, match with a little bit of squid for some scent, but you don't always need that. So when you're all the way up in the bow and you're on a crazy hot bike catching the biggest reds of your life and don't wanna walk all the way down to the bait take, putting a couple of these on your hook will make your day and save you a lot of trips down to the bait tank. So those are the circumstances and instances of when you will want to use either a sliding egg sinker or a torpedo sinker. If you're a beginner and you find yourself looking to purchase a new rod and reel, you do not need to break the bank and spend an arm and a leg. For instance, this dial with Seagate, this happens to be the 35 size, which is an extremely all around reel out here on the West Coast. It retails at $149.99. It is extremely nice reel for a fair price. There are some other options that are a little more inexpensive, but this one is still excellent. Ideally, when going and fishing any of our charter boats out here on the West Coast, you're gonna wanna have a conventional reel like such with at least 300 to 400 yards of braided line to assure no matter the style of fishing, whether it be rock cod fishing, you will be able to make it all the way down to the bottom with no issues. So that's the Daiwa Seagate, the 35, an extremely all around reel, ideally 50 to 65 pound braided line, yielding you three to 400 yards worth. Then I like to pair that reel up with a respectable rod. For instance, this is a seven foot six Okuma PCH rated 30 to 60 pound test, which is extremely universal. Figure out here on the West Coast, 30, 40 pound test is going to be our most used fishing line. So therefore this 30 to 60 will have the 30 and 40 fit right in the middle, which is perfect. Hey Harry, do I want to use a spinning rod? No, you don't want to use a spinning rod. The reason why I would suggest you not to use a spinning rod is this. When fishing a conventional rod, the reel will sit on top of the rod and the line will go off the top of the blank. When fishing a spinning rod on the other hand, it will be flopped over. Therefore, your guides will be on the bottom and your line will also be on the bottom. So when the captain says you're gonna be fishing 700 vertical feet of water, you're gonna to have to wind up 700 feet with the conventional. I can simply set my handle on the rail and turn the handle. While with the spinning rod, the first thing that's gonna to touch that rail is the line, which you are much more likely to damage or break and lose your fish. Therefore, that is why I would suggest a conventional rod. And here are some of the other essentials that can make your fishing trip a lot more pleasurable to be on. A tackle box will make it nice for when putting all these hooks and weights and stowing them away, you'll be able to organize them in the trays, throw it off your shoulder, put it into the tackle racks. But for us fair weathered skin folk, a hat is definitely crucial. And the number one thing that I have at all times, no matter what, is sunblock. I get burned, the sun does not like me very much. But for other you, sunblock is still nice to have. If this is going to be one of your first times going out on a charter boat, Dramamine or Bonine is essential if you do not know whether you get seasick. You're gonna wanna take one of these the night before fishing and the morning before you leave. Bait towels, you walk over to the bait tank, you get your hands all slimy, scaly, whatever it is. They have these little carabiner clips that you could clip to your pants, wipe your hands, get back to fishing. A pair of boots will also make your experience a whole lot less wet. There are two different types of boots to choose from. You have your shorter ankle boots and your taller calf boots. These are gonna keep you dry all the time. These are more likely to get wet, but they are much more comfortable. And when you're out on the boat, after trimming knots, all that good stuff, you will need something to trim your line, such as a set of pit bull line cutters. And when the deckhands are busy, they're helping other customers and you have a fish that's ready to be unhooked, it's nice for you to have your own set of pliers for when rather than you having to wait, you can unhook your fish, get right back in the water. As a new fisherman, these are all of the essentials that you will need when going and fishing all the charter boats 
out here in the Southern California West Coast. So don't forget to ring that bell to be notified on our next video. Like and subscribe, and don't forget to drop a comment of what you guys thought. And until then, tight lines, Harry over at Tackle Express.